here's the story. <laughs> and then there's a backstory before I even get into what happened. Um, I had this piece. I had this piece for a long time. It's um, a piece actually that I milk painted and it didn't sell and I've just had it here and it was cute. I mean, there was nothing wrong with it. It was just a little bit, it needed a little umph. So let me just give you a little bit of background. I started out, I don't know if the lighting is good or not. Tell me guys if you can see. The background, which I, I guess I should have like videotaped that. Um, I went over the whole piece with weathered wood, which is a dark DIY paint. It's like a, like a grayish brown. I did that as a, as a base. It was light blue before. And um, then I used uh, DIY paint. I used Apothecary Aviary, new color Aviary, which is a really pretty green. Um, and uh, Apothecary, and I used Vintage Linen, which is a white, and Farm Fresh. That's what I used, right, Farm Fresh. And, um, which is like a greeny blue, pale greeny blue. And I did this piece by ragging. I'm sure if you've, if you've never seen ragging before, it's just, um, uh, you know, I'm sort of stippled on the different colors in different places. And then I used a wet rag to pick up the color to give it a little bit of texture and interest so that the colors kind of blend together a little bit. Um, and then if you're familiar with DIY, the way DIY paint works, it's a clay-based chalk paint, and there's no sealer in here. So when I go to seal, this paint um, will go darker. This is not going to be the, the final color. It, it lightens as it dries, and then when you seal, it goes darker again. So, I mean, like here, if you could see, this is aviary. That looks like a pretty dark green. It doesn't look like that's on there right now, but it is. It's in there. It's in there. So it'll, all these colors are going to pop when I, when I seal. So anyway, I did my thing, and then I decided I was going to use one of the new IOD transfers, which is this one here. It's called Wallflower. And if you're not familiar with these, they're, they're rub-on transfers. Um, it comes in a big, big sheet. It's about 23, I think it's 23 by, or 30, yeah, 24 by 33. So it's a big sheet. Usually one sheet will fit on a, on a depression piece like this. Um, and um, it's the, the, the patterns, they're, they're very thoughtfully laid out because you can cut them up in strategic ways so you don't have to use the whole piece. And this one just intrigued me because the colors are so pretty and it's, it, there's a lot going on on this, this transfer. So I figured, all right, I'm gonna take this piece that I didn't really do much to to begin with and I'm gonna like, I just need to perk it up. I need to do something really great. So I started out because I, you know, as I said, I don't know if you could see from, here but there's sort of like a big bouquet in the middle and then it's got like four pieces around and you can cut in between so you don't have to use the whole piece and I started out by especially when it's a large piece like this sometimes it's easier to just go on in small pieces um, as you're fitting it onto your piece so I started out just by doing the corners and I did the corner this corner I came around the edge and just basically I did the periphery of the piece and at this point, it's like 1.30 in the morning, and I'm saying, oh man, that is so nice, that's so nice, stop. It's perfect. Stop. Do you ever do that? I, I tend to like, don't know, I don't know when to stop sometimes. <laughs> that's my problem. <laughs> I don't know when to stop. It's like, you know, I... I I don't know, it's, it, it's, like, it's like a piece of cake, you know? It's like the whole cake. Lori, you can have one piece and stop. No, no, I need to eat the whole damn cake. That's, that's what happened. I ate the whole cake last night. <laughs> so there I was, I did the, the corners and I thought, gee, isn't that pretty if I just go around the edge and I'll leave the inside bare and it'll be nice. But no, 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 I had to take the big bouquet in the middle and put it right slap in the middle the whole piece. So I just feel like here, I'm gonna try to get out of the way. I just feel like I went a little, I, I feel like I went a bridge too far. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Have you ever been there? Have you ever gone a bridge too far? That's how I feel. In the middle of the night, I was like screaming, oh shoot, what did I do? It was fine the way it was. Oh, Heather, thank you, thank you. I mean, they, they are beautiful, don't get me wrong. These IOD transfers, one is prettier than the next. They are so lovely. The, the patterns are so pretty. And um, 
they dress up anything. I mean, you can start with, you, you could do anything from the ridiculous to the sublime and stick a, a transfer on it and it just dresses your piece up and all of a sudden you have a completely new piece of furniture. So I put this middle piece on and I thought, oh shoot, I just think it's too much. I think I just, I mean, it, 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 it's not that it's not pretty, but it just felt like it just went a little too far for me. So I tried in the corner, let me see if I can pull you guys over a little bit. But I, I kind of, I got this idea, actually, I think I saw something that Dion, the turquoise iris, had done, which I thought was pretty interesting. She, she did, it looked like she had distressed um, the, the, uh, the a transfer that she had used. And these do distress, and they distress very easily. And they kind of have, if you've ever used them before, let me bring this back up again. Um, they, they, they're kind of like, have a, they have a built-in distressed look to them because they're made to look vintage but um what's really neat about them is you can distress them a little bit more but i did distress it a little bit here and i kind of like the way it looks i'm using what is this this is um you know what this is maybe a little too much hold on here this is 400 grit i'm using a a, a finer grit here um so so i'm just gonna you know i'm thinking yeah you know i kind of like the way it looks, because I don't know if you can see, but there's, there's, with the stippling that I done and the ragging, I got a lot of good texture in here. So even though I, you know, I like to, even, even when I get texture, I still like to sand back with a very high grit like this, like a 400 or a 600 grit, um, because I, I just like that when you, when I'm done, even though you see the texture, you don't feel it. I like to have a smooth finish. But there is, you know, it, it's there. So when I put the, um, when I lightly sand, some of that texture is coming through. And I, I kind of like that because, you know, people are gonna, if you put this in your house, over time it's going to wear. And I think that having something, you know, I've had like high polished furniture in my house, like my, my dining room table, which is an Ethan Allen table I got years ago. And it's, so it's such a beautiful table and the problem is every time it gets a nick it's so obvious because it doesn't belong there but when you have something like this that you can distress um and distressing is part of the look of the piece then i i think it wears better because you know you, you know if somebody says oh you know it's like you didn't scratch it oh like that's just you know the beauty it's the natural beauty of the piece <laughs> so so distressing can be a good thing so that is my plan right now. I'm just going to try. Yeah, I kind of like this. See, the more I do it, I just, you know, I don't want to take the whole transfer. I'm telling you, there was a point like last night I was thinking, oh, God, if I sand this off, I'm going to shoot myself. I just, I, you know, I, I tend to do things in the moment and then... I kind of make it up as, as I go along. And that was kind of like what I did yesterday. It was just like, oh, let's just do the whole thing. What the hell? Um, and then I don't think it through. Or sometimes I just can't vi visualize how it's going to look afterwards. And, um, but that's okay. You can, there's a fix for everything, right? Like the little bumps that I'm bringing up that are underneath and are coming through just by lightly distressing. So I'm just doing the high parts here again. Look, it's like you just get those little bumps. Yeah, see, I love this. Just the little the little bit of texture that's behind the, the transfer pops, pops up. But I just distressed this flower and I'm, I'm getting like the little blue. The blue is coming through from behind, which is really pretty. That is really pretty. So, you know, you just, I guess you just can't, you know, you can't be frightened to do stuff. If, if you make a mistake, I mean, that's really the, the, the lesson learned in all of this is there's, you can't do anything that bad. You just can't because even if you make a mistake, you can fix it, right? You know, here this was, this was a piece I painted it a year ago. Paint it over again, that's all, no big deal. I have hardware, I have the original hardware. I'm not sure if I'm gonna use that. I may do something prettier. I was thinking maybe crystal or glass hardware, something a little girly looking. I'm wondering why it's not coming off. I'm using the wrong part of the paper. Thank you so much for being here. And um, I will catch you, I guess, in the next video, as they say. Be well.